Apparently we're in 20 feet of water, doing 5 miles an hour. Hey guys, welcome to the video. So today, as you can see, we're going to be installing a fish finder on my new Old Town Sportsman 120 PDL. Just kidding. It's not going to be this big giant one. It's going to be this little guy. Uh, something that pretty much everyone's probably going to be having on their kayak. This is a Hummingbird Helix 5, and that's what we're going to be installing on here. So let me get this out of here. We'll get started. Oh, if you're wondering where this is going, uh, you go ahead. Better go ahead and subscribe so you can see where this is going. Yeah, it's going on something, on something a lot bigger than this kayak. So, let's go ahead and get this install started with the transducer mount. That's what you want to install first. So we're going to start by taking this bracket off right here. Baby. Make sure you don't lose anything. Alright, if you're wondering what these extra screws and nuts and bolts are sitting here, you cannot use the factory hardware that comes with this. It's too long. These are 10 by 24 stainless steel bolts. I believe they're half inch long. So I'm hoping these work. They should. I don't see why not. So this is the plate that we want to attach right here to this piece. And you want to make sure that this, when it fits in, it's going to be facing down in the kayak like this. That way your transducer is protected by the top of this uh, skid plate right here. You don't want it sticking below the kayak. So that'll fit in there like that. So we'll mount it like so. You guys are wondering, it's an 11. Weird. Alright, so the next thing for us to do is to take the wire for the transducer cable, run it all through the scupper hole. And also, don't forget to peel this off or it's not going to work too well. Look at that. Alright, so we got our transducer cable ran, we got our hole drilled out for our Yak Attack through hole fitting, we got that put on, now we're just going to run all this transducer cable into the kayak. Yay, this is always fun, right? Lined up, and you're going to put these two screws in. And when you put these two screws in, they go on each side. 
take a little bit of silicone and put on it just to help make it uh, waterproof and to hold them in there and keep them from backing out as well. Alright, so I'm going to be using this RAM mount to attach mine. This is made specifically for the Helix 5. You take your Helix 5 mount, and this is another one of those situations where you need to buy your own hot hardware because this isn't going to work. You're going to use the 10 by 24 by 1 inch bolts to mount this on here. cable come out right here. I don't want to have it all the way down here and have this big long cable in the way that could get caught on stuff. So I'm thinking I'm going to come out somewhere right in here by this little uh, storage tray. Well those through hole fittings are flush mounted so there's not a whole lot to get in the way. I'm thinking maybe right here in this corner it'll come out and hook up right here to the back of the unit. I'll give myself a little bit of slack. So I can always like hook the wires inside there. Or I could go here and just have it run up the back right here. Alright, so let me decide on that. Uh, I might get this webbing out of my way. Make it a little bit easier to get to here with the drill. Alright, so I ended up putting my hole up here. Went ahead and put my through hole fitting over here. Got my transducer cable out. I'm going to make, leave myself a proper amount of slack. So if I wanted to slide this thing back, I still got room, so on and so forth. Yeah, that rubber on here is tight, but it's not so tight where I can't shove some of this cable back in or back out. But we can't close this up just yet because now we have to do the reverse to the power cable. I'm just going to go ahead and plug this in for now, just so it kind of stays in place. Same thing with the transducer cable. Then I'm going to take my power cable, stick it in here, and run it down here to where my battery is going to go, which is going to be underneath my seat. This should be fun times. All right, so I got my power cable ran. I got it back here. I already have my connections installed on it now. Put the through hole, through hole fitting on. Got the right rubber gaskets. Oh, and a little lesson learned when you drill a hole, make it a one inch hole. You'll thank me later. That three quarters is just a little bit too small. This is perfect. So get a one inch paddle bit and you'll be good to go. Now you guys know the routine. We're going to mount this in place. 
with our screws with a little bit of silicone on there and then we'll move back and I'll show you how I got the battery hooked up. Okay, for the battery that I'm using, it's a 12 volt, 12 amp hour, hour battery. Uh, my previous, I had a small Lowrance Elite 4. I used an 8 amp hour battery and I could fit it in a small waterproof box. Uh, but that one would run out sometimes on trips as the battery got older it would run out of juice faster and faster So I didn't want to have that problem again and later on down the road if I wanted to uh, run more accessories I have a bigger battery to do that. I can't fit this in the box so I'm just going to stick this straight down into the kayak. The kayak's pretty dry and if I have water that comes up this high to short out the battery I have a bigger problem than my fish finder running so that's the way I see it. To attach it to the bottom of the kayak so it's not in there sliding around I got some industrial, uh, industrial Velcro strips that I'm going to put on the bottom of this. That way it'll Velcro down and it won't go anywhere. I have a two pole connector. And it goes to a three amp inline fuse. That way I don't have to worry about my uh, $500 unit going out. And of course going to the battery itself to make it nice and easy. So I got everything heat shrinked on there, covered up, keep it from getting corroded. That's another thing I'm going to do is put electrical grease on all these points to keep them from corroding. Did the same thing to the power source of the fish finder. Got heat shrink on it. Another two pole connector. That way I can just connect and disconnect it. Leave this hooked up. That way it's not drawing on the battery. And then I get to where I want to go when I go fishing. It's that easy. Just like that. It'll be Velcro down. I'll have my connection. So I'm going to go ahead and Velcro that battery down. Let's sit there. We'll connect it and we'll see if we have success and the fish finder powers up. Fingers crossed. Hit better. Okay, here we go. Drum roll, please. Success! We got power. Let's see how she looks. I've had a Helix 9, never had a Helix 5 or anything else. So, yeah, this is a Gen 2. Let's do a simulation. Apparently we're in 20 feet of water, doing 5 miles an hour. There it is, we're all finished. Appreciate you guys watching the video and checking it out. Like I said, I really hope it helped you guys out. And if you made it this far through the video, please go ahead, leave it a thumbs up if it did help you out. Leave it a thumbs down if you didn't. I really don't care, just leave something. And then uh, if you want to guys see the more stuff to add on to this kayak or other videos that I had, Go ahead and click that subscribe button and ring that bell so you get notified. There, there's the pitch to subscribe. Guys, we appreciate it. I'm Joe, and thanks for watching Dismore Outdoors. Remember, we do more than Dismore. Y'all take care.